I'm going to check it out. I'm going to definitely promote it on my channel, man. I want to take a look at it, see what you got going on. Yeah, I appreciate the support. I appreciate the support. Definitely, 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 man. One more question, man. I want to ask you, um, when you're going into a business to get a location, right? Yeah. I know you said that you had dealt with some locators and stuff, but mm -hmm. you've gone in and got your own locations, I'm sure. Of course, yeah. Okay, so when you go into a location – what is your approach? How do you go in there and, and, and approach the situation? Yeah, absolutely. So it's changed recently because I'm not doing it with the National Children's Cancer Society. But that's one thing we should have talked about is, is that approach is going with the charity. Okay, we'll get back to that because I have a little charity I deal with as well. Okay, cool. So the charity thing is cool. So nowadays, I'm less focused on bulk, more focused on soda snack machines, combo machines, ATMs, and then claw machines. A lot of those, sometimes I'll do the toy machine. That's like my last pitch to them, but I'll go into a location and I'll ask for the decision maker. Sometimes that could be a very cocky approach and it could be taken not so well, but um, at the locations that you're going to get, they're, if they're going to say yes, they'll say like, okay, one second, and they'll bring a manager or owner up. So I'll go in and ask for the decision maker. Uh, you don't really want to deal with the other person. I've learned through all of this. If you're just dealing with an employee, it's going to take at least two, three more steps usually for you to actually get a decision um, if it's that big of a place. But for these places, I ask for a decision maker. Um, if it's a corporation, you're not going to get the decision maker. But from that point, if I have the decision maker, then I have the manager or owner right in front of me. I have my iPad, which is in my car actually. And then on my iPad, I go to my website. I show them our products, our machines, what we're about. And then I do a 60 second pitch on my company, our convenience, our service, and then essentially talk with them and see if it fits their needs. Um, usually I've been lucky so far that maybe 10 of my machines now I have to pay a commission on, but a lot of my machines I don't pay a commission on. One reason being National Children's Cancer Society. Another reason being people actually take soda snack machines and those type of machines as a convenience and as a service. So they actually don't expect you to pay them. Um, and the thing with negotiating is obviously you don't want to negotiate from a certain point, let them speak about that and then negotiate, you know, your way around that. But, exactly. It's all um, how you pitch it. Exactly. And that, I mean, that's essentially it. You know, no, no, pit, no sales pitch is ever going to be the same. Um, I don't want to say never cause it's such a hard word, but they're usually never the same. Um, because the other person's always going to say something different than the last person you spoke to. So exactly. And they're all gonna they're all gonna vary slightly. Yeah, absolutely. But that's my typical approach. Going for the decision maker, you're hitting right home. Once you have the decision maker, it's your job to pitch your services as if they need it. If you're not showing them the benefits of why your machine needs to be in that spot, they will say no every single time. You have to give them the benefits. Tell them you're with a charity, you're giving back if that's what you do. Tell them you'll give them a commission if that's what you want to do, or just tell them, hey. The, the smaller machines are a little different, but just tell them, hey, I'll put toys in here. I'll put candy in here. It's going to keep your employees and customers happy while they wait. But Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's. My locations. I have just recently, I picked up one location where I pay a percentage, and that's only because I put the coin pusher in there. Yeah. You know, and that's just, that's on a different level. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and and the owner puts so much money in that machine that it doesn't even matter yeah because <laughs> <laughs> he loves to play them yeah so, absolutely you know it's almost like i'm giving him his money back <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i have i have a it's one of my good best videos supposedly based on analytics but there's a locating video that i have on my channel if your channel wants to check that out that was more for bulk um but it was like eight or so tips on what i do to locate um i actually heard or read somewhere we're not in the vending business we're in the lead generation business specializing in vending machines. Because okay. if you can generate an infinite amount of leads, you can sell them vending machines. You know what I mean? We need our leads. We need good, good leads to develop our business. Because some days, Mike, I'm sure you'll go out. I mean, I never try to come home uh, with a machine. But some days you can go out and try to place, let's say, you think you're going to get five machines. And you go out and you only get one. It sometimes can be discouraging, but the point of the business is you have to wake up the next day and go out and do it again. If that's what you want to do, if you want to grow this business, you got to continue doing it. 
Um, but it's never going to be the same for everyone. Like he said, people say, oh, three in every 10, you'll get a bulk machine or, you know, one in every 10, you'll get a soda snack machine. It's never like that. I've went out days where I think I've hit a whole, I hit a whole zip code of locations where maybe it was 70 or 80 businesses and not one of them was a solid yes. It wasn't until the last three that I went to, they actually started talking to me a little bit. And obviously I had to change my approach. This was in the beginning, but you never know. You really never know. Never take a no first either, but that's my last thing. You have to, you know, like when you go in and get a no, say, say three more things, you know? Definitely. Offer something else. Exactly. I always ask them, why not? Why not? I you need to learn. Why not? What's it? Usually, I mean, it really depends. It does. Sometime, it does. Sometimes you can just tell the person doesn't want it. It's not even worth it. It's time to get out of there. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes the person is kind of like a iffy no. And, you know, I'll say, you know, is there a particular reason why not? And um, maybe they'll say they don't want candy on the ground that they have to sweep up or gum stuff. And yep. then, you know, then it gives me an opportunity to bring forward. What about maybe like some toy capsule machines to keep the kids occupied while you're doing business with the parents? Mm -hmm. And, you know, or it depends on really what I'm pitching. Am I pitching to customers or am I pitching to employees? If I'm pitching to employees, then definitely, you know, the capsules aren't going to do me any good. Of course. Maybe they don't want gum and I can tell them, okay, well, I won't put any gum in here. You know, I can put in different types of candy. And, you know, sometimes you can talk someone into it. And I've done it numerous times. But usually there were more customer-driven locations where I was able to get capsules or toys or uh, bouncy balls or stuff like that in there. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> it all depends. But, uh, yeah, it I all never depends. accept that first no. Don't ever accept the first no. That's my thing. Even if they're like a very strict person or you get the vibe that they don't even want to talk to you, just at least get two answers out of them. Just see why they don't want it. Like he said, that's definitely a good one. Because then if they say, oh, we won't make money off her. Or if they say you can counter them back, you know, you want to you wanna control the sale. I mean, I, we could go into sales, sales techniques as well because that's a big thing of this. But you have definitely to yes. – you have to control the sale. And that's the biggest thing. If you go in and then they just say no, like they already won. And then you walk out, that's it. But you have to play to the individual. Each person's personality type is different. Yep. So if you can create value in that person, then you can win it over. Absolutely. And sometimes it's not even good to just go strictly in and just ask about putting a, a machine in. Sometimes ask how they're doing. And become a customer. Yeah. You know? And then once you become a customer, Let's say you go into a pizza place and order a slice of pizza, order some pizza. Now you've become a customer. You get to talking with the owner about his pizza being good. And then nonchalantly bring up that you have a, a candy machine business. Hey, you know what? I, you know, I'm a, I have this little business on the side. I'm a local vendor. How, how would you feel about me placing one of my machines in here? Now you've already got him on the good side. You've spent money with him. He's going to be more likely compelled to let you place the machine in there that's the best way i notice for bulk candy when you're going on a retail side whether it be food or if they sell anything which sometimes it's not good but i had a burger place um right by my house right here um and they i went in there one day and i actually i bought a burger and then i was sitting there and i actually just realized i wasn't even going in there to sell them and i realized like wow this is there's so many little kids in here this would be the best spot it's one of my best locations now but i was like i had my burger and the guy was willing to talk to me and he didn't even hesitate to say no he said yeah no problem like it was it wasn't even a thing i was like oh let me put a bouncy ball uh can i put a bouncy ball machine in here and he was like yeah no problem why not you know why not yeah, definitely. you never you really never know yeah, you never know until you go in and try. You yeah, absolutely. Go in and try. Yeah, absolutely. And it does all depend. It's, it's, it's not a, this is what you should do. This is how it's going to work. It really will depend on the person. Um, definitely what you said, don't be rude like me. I sounded like I'm a rude person and I go in these places. I obviously go in and I'm asking them how they're doing. Um, but definitely if you cater to their emotions, that's going to do a lot better. And I like how you said that, you know, cater to their emotional side of things or understand like wherever they're coming from or get on their friendly side and then sell them slightly. Don't try to make it like it's a sale. Never make it like it's a sale. We're not selling vending machines. You're selling a service. So 
Don't look like a salesman. Just look like you're offering something good for their business. A lot of times, just common courtesy. You know what I mean? A lot of common courtesy. Exactly. Like we go to locations, me and Giorgio, you know, a lot of times we, we see a lot of the people who buy stuff out of our machines and we'll, hey, you want a handful of candy? You want a cup of candy? You know, we give them a handful then. You give them like a little styrofoam cup with candy or maybe give them a soda or a snack out of the machine, a few people around. And, and these are the people who put money in your machines. And they're going to remember that. And they're going to come back and they're going to spend more with you. Because they're going to be, oh, yeah. Keeps them happy. Like, oh, it took, my, it took a dollar from me. Well, you want your dollar back or you want a product while I'm here? Oh, yeah, let me get one of those. Oh, here you go. No problem. Exactly. You know, I mean, you're making enough money that it's not going to really make a difference. It shouldn't. Yeah, maybe in the beginning, that might be a little hard. But even in the beginning, if you start with, let's say, a bulk machine, give them 50 cents, give them 75 cents and say, here, these are for the customers, you know? Definitely. Or give it straight to the customers. If I go in at any location and there's a kid looking at me while I'm filling up my machines and collecting my money, I do not hesitate to give him whatever he wants to go on my machine because he's going to be happy and he's probably going to even ask his mom for a second quarter. Like, the parents are going to remember that too. Exactly. You always get on the parents' good side because they're usually going to visit the same business. Uh, exactly. It usually is like that. It, it, again, it depends, which it's crazy. It but. depends, but for the most part, a lot of them will. And me yeah. personally, since I have my sticker on all the machines, subscribe to Chrome Vending, you know, it can also get me a subscriber or two. Do you ever get people, uh, I mean, I, it gets away from the topic here, but do you ever get people that like will comment and say, hey, I used your machine or I went to your location and I saw your channel? Like, do people reach out to you that do that? Because I wonder if it's a good thing to do. Uh, I haven't really, um, I haven't had anybody leave me a comment that said that. I'm not yeah. really sure. Because yeah. I can't tell, and, you know, I can't tell every viewer who watches my videos. Of or, course. But um, I haven't received any comments like that. Yeah. But um, I know that there are people who do have my machines who, you know, like some of the business owners who do watch the, the footage on my channel. They might not watch every single video, but they do watch and comment from time to time. Yeah, that's cool. And, you know, and give me uh, encouragement, you know, to keep going and things like yeah. that. So that's cool, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, this was good. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right, man. It's been a pleasure definitely speaking with you on here and getting an opportunity to, to bring your story in front of my viewers and um, for me to get the opportunity to bring my story in front of your viewers. Absolutely. You know, and, um, who knows? Maybe we could reach more people with our combined story and more people who are looking for a way to create a passive income for themselves and who do want to try to invest in a vending machine and try to build something for themselves and, you know, create a better financial situation in their household. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're going we're gonna to continue to do this. I think this one came out well. Uh, we covered a few topics. There's still so many more things we have to cover. But um, Absolutely. this is the first one. And if any of you have any uh, questions or anything that you'd like to see us discuss or talk about, leave us a comment down below. We'll even give you a shout out in the next time we do it. And we'll try to answer your questions to the best of our ability. Um, and yeah, man, you got anything you want to close with? Yep. Thank you. I mean, thank you for having me on here. Thanks for talking. I'm excited for, you know, how this comes out and how people enjoy it. I think that was a good point that you made. Our two stories together is better than one story. Some people might relate better with us talking together. So going into the future, I'm excited to see how people react to this video. Um, as well, you could check me out on my social media. Um, I'm pretty big on Instagram and Facebook. It's just at the Don Barbado. We'll put that somewhere maybe in the description. And, um, I'm excited. I think one thing I want to add to ending this off is just, you said a lot of awesome stuff. You said a lot of motivational things. I don't want to say it was motivational, like, oh, that's what you were trying to do. But you said a lot of things that hit home with me that made me understand things better. So hopefully people at home are encouraged to go out and start a business or start a vending business, or at least push their life in a different direction if they want to, you know? And that's definitely, if this comes out that way, then me and you are doing what we want to do. We're impacting people. And at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. You know, that's what makes us happy. That's what fulfills us. So definitely. thanks for having, I, great talking to you, dude. Great talking to you. All right, man. All right, everybody. That was the fourth and final part. I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you did, make sure you leave us a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. If you want to see more videos like this, we'll put some more together about topics maybe you want to hear about. Also, y'all make sure y'all go check out Dominique Barbado on all his social media sites. Follow him on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. 
He's an entrepreneur. He's got a lot of things going on. So if you want to figure out extra ways to make money on the side, not just with vending, you can go check out what he has to offer. Also, you want to see more videos from Chrome Vending? Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And I'll see you next time I make another video.